of the internet for years after her appearance. Oh yeah, definitely. Parents on the Dr. Phil show, her presumptuous oh, attitude, attention-seeking tactics, and accused appropriation of black culture just made people despise her. But it also got her filthy rich. Danielle's career was literally handed to her, but unlike most people who get 15 minutes of fame, she turned it into an empire. This girl was a child when her worst moment moments were being broadcasted to the entire world. Today, she has transformed into someone we barely even recognize, but it was all a part of the plan. On September 14th, 2016, Dr. Phil aired the- Hey, you know what? I'll give it to her. She did. You know what? I might not like her at all, but you know what? She did take that 15 minutes of fame and turn it into something bigger, you know? She did. Gotta give her her props. The 8th episode of its 15th season, which featured a 13-year-old girl from Florida named Danielle Bergoli. Danielle was seemingly a typical teenager whose rebellious and delinquent behavior reached a point where her mother could not control her, knife-wielding, skipping school, and stealing cars for a quick joyride. She even stole a crew member's car while the episode was being filmed. Despite Danielle's obvious pitfalls, people were also pointing the finger at her mother. Mom, my daughter is so out of control and provocative. Also, Mom, allow daughter to install a stripper pole in her bedroom. But the biggest problem her mother had was Danielle's love for violence. She liked to fight. It's important to note that the show producers encouraged Danielle to be as rambunctious as she could on camera, because it's more entertaining. At one point, Danielle even challenged her own mother to a fight on the set, but she also challenged anyone else in the audience to throw some hands. Want to make the switch to Shopify and keep all of your business critical data? No. Huh? Catch me outside, how about that? Nobody wanted to go the rounds with Danielle, but these six words would drastically change her life forever. Her manufactured black scent that she claims is due to her being from the streets made the phrase catch me outside, how about that sound like catch me outside, how about that? And I don't think I've ever seen something more viral in my life. Your parents, maybe even your grandparents know about this iconic catchphrase. She became a social media sensation known as the cash me outside girl. Danielle was used by boomers as confirmation bias to prove that Gen Z is a bunch of entitled brats. But even Gen Z was laughing at her because they knew she was their generation's jester. It was like this perfect moment where all generations, all walks of life- Who, 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 who is jester? If came together to Who agree that? that the Cash Me Outside girl was a joke. The Dr. Phil YouTube channel gained 8 million views in one month from the clip of Danielle's episode. To this day, the channel has accumulated over 200 million YouTube views just from Danielle's appearances on the show. But the crazy part is, Danielle didn't even know she was the laughingstock of the internet at the time. Dr. Phil had Danielle transported to the Turnabout Ranch after her episode. Turnabout Ranch is neither owned nor operated by Dr. Phil, but is an independent- It's-, it's it's shut down, right? It's shut down, right? It doesn't have a Wikipedia? It should have a Wikipedia, it doesn't. Oh, everyone's saying, everyone's saying it's a scam. Oh my goodness. Is it shut down? Closed? I don't even know if this is done. No? Dude, it's still active? No way. It's still open? What? It's still open. How? I thought it closed. Residential Treatment Center for Troubled Youth located in Utah. The ranch is a therapeutic program that aims to help teenagers and young adults dealing with behavioral and emotional issues. Danielle didn't get to experience her newfound wave of clout since she didn't have access to social media or a cell phone while in Utah. After she returned home, she opened social media and was shocked. At first I didn't know how to handle it. I was just like, my instinct was to like, 
cuss everyone out who said it to me. Since her Dr. Phil episode was the most successful episode of all time, it only made sense for his producers to bring her back on the show. In February of 2017, just four months after her original appearance, she returned to Dr. Phil to a studio without an audience where they discussed her time at Turnabout Ranch. She said her time there was fine before expressing that she was happy that she went. We would later find out that she was lying, and her time at the ranch was much darker and more sinister than she was comfortable admitting. She also said that Dr. Phil was nothing before she came on the show, which prompted even more people to continue making memes about the bratty child. The memes prompted hip-hop producer DJ Suede, the remix god, to make a song sampling her infamous catchphrase. Suede's trap beat titled Catch Me Outside sits at over 60 million views on YouTube, but we realized the true power of the meme when this song peaked at number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100. Wow. A meme trap beat spent three weeks on the Billboard Hot 100. 2017 was wild. Danielle and her mother, Barbara, sued DJ Suede over unpaid royalties for the remix. Barbara alleged that the DJ and his manager exploited her daughter after they agreed to let them use her voice and popular catchphrase on the record. According to legal documents obtained by TMZ, Danielle accepted a deal where she would get half of the remix profits. However, Barbara alleged that DJ Suede refused to pay them their royalties. Suede responded to the lawsuit saying, My team and lawyer already read y'all the contract several times for months, and we have everything on paper. How about that? He added, Damn. I mean, hey, if she signed the court, the, 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 the if she signed the papers, then hey. He's right. Shaking know? my head. 15 minutes went by pretty fast, huh? Ironically, it was actually DJ Suede whose 15 minutes of fame that he got from Danielle was over because the world Damn. was about to be introduced to Bad Baby, whose fame was about to last a whole lot longer than 15 minutes. Yeah, that's crazy. It did. It did. Minutes. So, but this did, break though. from today's sponsor will only last about a minute, so hear me out. Have you ever Googled your name and... I have, but I can't hear you out, Patrick. I, go, I love you, man, but I... I, 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 I heard Catch Me Outside on the radio and knew she could be a star. He reached out and arranged an appointment with Danielle. You played on the radio? As... I said, I want to manage you. Give me some time. I'll make you a star. I'll make you guys rich. We want to make this thing happen. With no hesitation, they were like, okay, done. They had no clue what that meant. Colger wanted to take advantage of Danielle's bad girl persona and take this villain, relentless, crazy attitude kid and just brand her as this supervillain. She's going to be the one that the kids have to hide from their parents. Wanting to find a way to turn followers into money, Adam solicited the help of Dan Roof, the founder of a digital firm named Flute. Dan came on board as Danielle's digital manager, booking live appearances and setting up sponsorship deals. The same week Danielle reappeared on Dr. Phil, she starred in Kodak Black's music video for Everything 1K. This video was literally just Kodak's song with Danielle flexing cash, wearing grills, and sitting on a Rolls Royce while mouthing Kodak's lyrics, which prompted the video to gain almost 50 million views. On her trip home from LA, Danielle boarded a Spirit Airlines flight where she and her mother got into a fight with a passenger. But as other camera angles were released, it seemed like the passenger was potentially the aggressor and Danielle was just defending her mom. <laughs> Danielle and her friends got into another fight with random people one Saturday night in Lake Worth, Florida. Then in April, she was cited for possession of marijuana in Boynton Beach. The 14-year-old was unsupervised, out of control, and on top of that being ridiculed by random people on the streets. It was a recipe for disaster. It also became increasingly obvious that her mother was no longer interested in helping Danielle when she realized she could make money from her daughter's delinquency. But despite her bad behavior, she was cultivating a real fan base through YouTube, where she uploaded consistent reaction videos showcasing more of her brazen personality that were generating over 1 million views per video. If you had a child and a hoe tried you in front of them, what would you do? I would go to my car, turn on my car, put the air on in the car, strap my kid into their seat, and go beat the f***ing life out of that her manager also knew that she had some rapping ability. And let's be honest, in 2017, at the height of the Lil Pump and Lil Xan era, you didn't need much skill. Oh man, those are crazy times.
crazy time. Plus, influencers life. like Rice Gum and Jake Paul were gaining unimaginable view counts on their terrible music. Colger proceeded to book studio time for Danielle, but she was hesitant at first. I was like, I don't want to put these headphones on. I don't want to get in this booth. But then she had a change of heart. I was like, I'm prettier than all these people in here. I looked at the people in the room and I was like, I'm better than you. I can do this. I'll be fine. I won't look stupid. Soon, she was in a meeting well... opposite Atan Ben Horan, the global head of artists and repertoire Nigga like Kason. <laughs> at Warner Music Group. Ben put together a team of 14 writers and producers to work on Danielle's first professional single, High Bid. They started her music rollout with a track called These Hoes, which peaked at number 77 on the Billboard Hot 100. chart, making Danielle the youngest female rap artist to debut on the Hot 100. It also made Baby the third youngest solo artist of all time to chart on the Hot 100, behind JoJo and Stevie Wonder. The track's success led to Danielle signing a record deal with Atlantic Records. She then remixed Kodak Black's Roll in Peace and T Grizzly and Lil Yachty's From D to the A, but even her biggest haters could not deny her second debut single, High Bit which reached number 68 on the Billboard Hot 100, while the music video accumulated over 200 million views since its initial up. Damn. Damn. Can't knock her. That's a lot of fucking views. <laughs> Damn. The song was eventually certified platinum less than five wow. months later. Most people on the internet were calling her music trash, but the numbers didn't lie. Plus, it is trash, but these are, they, they're right. It, it, they don't lie. But it is trash. It, she it wasn't is garbage, afraid of but, criticism. You know. She's low key smart, okay? I'm not gonna fing say she's smart because she's a little bitch. I don't know how to I'm a little bitch. Oh, she is smart, though. She is smart. Definitely. I'm a bitch, but you're the one sitting in the busted ass chair with your busted ass forehead, with your busted ass face, and your busted ass room. So why are you coming for me? Rappers like Lil Yachty voiced their support for her career, which was followed by a collaboration titled Gucci Flip Flops that peaked at number 79 on the Billboard Hot 100 before receiving a platinum certification. You know what? This song is catchy. I'll say that. Like, I'll give props where it's due. This song is catchy. I ain't gonna lie. Because... I ain't gonna lie. It's, it's catchy. It's Her catchy. string of success led to Bad Baby receiving a nomination at the 2018 Billboard Music Awards for Best Female Rap Artist, alongside Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Over the next few months, Baby collaborated with artists like Ty Dolla Sign, YG, Lil Baby, City Girls, Charlie XCX, and Asian Doll. She announced her Band in the USA tour across North America and Europe, where she sold out various 150 to 500 person venues in nearly every city she visited. Doubts about brain health supplements? But whenever she had some positive momentum, she would revert back to her old self. In peak 2018 tomfoolery, Bad Baby runs into her arch nemesis, Woe Vicky, accompanied by the in This is anti. This is anti. This is her anti theory. This is her anti theory. <laughs> And then this her right there. You know what? Nah, 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 I'm not gonna say that. But she's. Well, Vicky's her anti fairy, definitely. Miss Lil Tay for a good old fashioned scrap. But all we got was high pitched screaming and standing behind grown men pretending like they actually wanted to fight. Come on, touch me. I want you to hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Come on. If you hit me, I'll That is her anti fairy, like, fuck. You coming out of me, so you hit me. You're so bad. This was huge news at the time, but this would not be their final battle. Danielle announced a six-month deal with Copycat Beauty, getting paid $900,000 to promote the brand's products on her social media and music videos. She then signed a 12-episode deal for a reality show called Bringing Up Baby. The show premiered in February of 2019 on Snapchat as one of their many Snap originals. The first episode showcased her life behind the scenes and the hurdles she encountered amid her rise in the industry. This show reportedly earned over 10 million viewers in its first 24 hours. To compare, at the time, Keeping Up With The Kardashians was only getting 1.5 million views per episode. TMZ reported that Danielle made well over $10 million during 2019 due to her reality show. And although many still saw Danielle 
Danielle as the snobby kid from Dr. Phil, capitalizing on her five seconds of fame, the fan base she gained was undeniable. Maybe her fans saw her as a troubled teen who was misunderstood and taken advantage of as a child. Maybe they didn't see someone desperate for attention and rather someone who was unapologetically themselves, but there was no denying that she was still a loudmouth kid who always managed to find her way into trouble. At Cardi B's Fashion Nova launch party, Danielle decided to throw a drink of water on Iggy Azalea. Deserved. You know what? That's deserved. No one likes her. No one likes Iggy Azalea, so that's deserved. No one likes her. <laughs> that's deserved. That was deserved. Iggy seemingly had no idea what happened, nor did she really seem to care. It looked like Danielle pre-planned the attack while hiding behind her bodyguards and trying to make a spectacle, but Iggy did not cave. Danielle claimed that Iggy was talking crazy about her on Instagram. She was referring to a Shade Room Instagram post that asked, who is going to see Bad Baby on tour? And Iggy commented, are you? Iggy responded to the incident. I get that this little girl has made a name for herself acting a damn fool on television and online. But I'm a grown up. I'm not about to waste my energy on that shit or be fighting a kid in a club. Azalea handled the situation like an adult, just making Danielle look even more childish and immature. Okay, good on her. Her first W in years. Danielle also had a habit of making drama about her when nobody was directing hate towards her in the first place. In an interview with People, Jermaine Dupri, legendary songwriter and record producer, expressed his disappointment with the female rap game. They all rapping about the same thing. I don't think they're showing us who is the best rapper. For me, it's like strippers rapping. While these comments triggered responses from several women in the industry, Baby specifically replied, He's right. Replied, Jermaine he was Dupri right. can suck my Been like 10 years since Bow Wow. Sit down, Grandpa. Since Danielle was on top of the game, she was able to run her mouth. She wasn't topping the charts, but her music videos and songs were still accumulating tens of millions of YouTube views, and she was consistently collaborating with every major industry rapper, but she was burning bridges with people who might be able to help her once her hype dies down. And as we approach 2020, people were getting really tired of Bad Baby, but they did enjoy seeing her get beat up by her biggest op, Whoa Vicky. A brawl between Danielle and Whoa Vicky occurred during a recording session in Atlanta. TMZ got a hold of the footage from the fight where it seemed as though Vicky got the best of Danielle. Baby later took to social media saying, anyone who says I got beat up is delusional. This girl ain't hit me one time. She grabbed my hair and somehow ended up on top of me. The whole time my face stayed untouched. Every normal person observing this situation is wondering why these girls are hanging out with nothing but grown men who are filming them while they physically assault each other. But once Danielle posted a video to Instagram wearing box braids, the conversation around her cultural appropriation finally needed to be discussed. People were noticing Danielle slowly transforming her image and accused her of blackfishing. Because she was sporting traditionally black hairstyles and even tanning slash darkening her skin to a point where some people might even mistake her as non-white. This look Danielle is going for is now considered to be the beauty standard in pop culture. However, for the longest time, black people, specifically black women, were demonized and ridiculed for their hair, skin, AAV accent, and all other physical features that they were born with. Now that black women's natural features are being praised in our society, white women like Danielle Now that black women's natural queen natural features are being queen. praised in our society, white women like Danielle can just put on a wig, tan their skin, get lip fillers and surgical procedures to reap all the benefits of being black, but also just transform back into being white whenever they want. Danielle addressed the criticism with an instant. Nick said transform like they're going Super Saiyan. Oh, this is Dragon Ball. Instagram story. To all the black females that are saying my hair ain't meant for box braids, guess what? Y'all hair ain't meant to be straight, but y'all glue wigs onto your heads and sew Brazilian, Indian, and Peruvian hair, which is anything like your natural hair texture. She then goes to deny the cultural appropriation and follow that up with, I love the Why would she say this? Now this is not it. The way I look, plus that? your man agrees. And we all know I look fine AF with any hairstyle I do from any culture because I'm just that girl. I hope y'all bald-headed hoes stay up all night thinking about this. Every time she opened her mouth, it just got worse. I don't act black. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Who wants to be black? I don't understand that. After this con- Damn. That, damn. <laughs> What does she mean by that? Damn. Wow. 
the racism just slips out. That just slipped out. Controversy, she remained pretty quiet until summer of 2020 when news broke that she entered a rehab facility at an undisclosed location where she'd received treatment for a combination of things, including childhood trauma and substance abuse in the form of prescription pills. Her management team told TMZ, We are very proud of Danielle for recognizing that she needed help and seeking it out. Following her release from rehab, Danielle continued her journey of healing and self-development when she posted a YouTube video breaking her silence about the Turnabout Ranch. Dr. Phil, I am going to give you from now till April 5th to issue an apology, not only to me, but to Hannah and any other child that you sent to Turnabout or any other program like this. And if you don't, I'm going to handle things my way. Danielle had played the villain character her whole life, and now she was starting to gain sympathy from the internet. Danielle was inspired to share her story after a woman named Hannah Archuleta came forward a month earlier, claiming that she was sexually assaulted by a staff member at Turnabout Ranch. Hannah was also sent to the ranch by Dr. Phil in 2019 when she was 17 years old. The Turnabout Ranch is one of the many wilderness programs that take place in rural Utah. If you watch my video about Chet Hanks, who was also sent to a Utah camp, or if you watch the Netflix documentary Hell Camp, then you know all about the horrors of these programs. But if you don't know, wilderness therapy programs are a major part of the multi-billion dollar troubled teen industry, which also includes therapeutic boarding schools and residential treatment centers. These programs are designed for adolescents struggling with issues like drug dependency, depression, poor grades, low self-confidence, ending thoughts, and eating disorders. The idea is to isolate them in the middle of nowhere America to remove them from their privileges, then provide therapy and give them wilderness experiences like hiking, camping, or working on a ranch in hopes that it will allow them to recognize how good their home life actually is. However, these experiences well, that fucking sucks. Mostly consists of doing manual labor for hours on end. And over the years, there have been hundreds, thousands of reports of staff members abusing, hazing, humiliating, sleep depriving, sexually assaulting, drugging, and doing some of the most horrific things to these teenagers. Danielle experienced and witnessed similar horrors during her time there when she was just 13 years old. But the worst of all was witnessing a murder. Now for just $1.99, enjoy the... You know what? That's a great place to put an ad. You know, you want to know why it's a good place to put an ad? Because it, you know what? That was this very suspenseful moment. You see how my face just changed and an ad just popped up? That's a perfect place to place an ad. I can't even knock him for that. One morning I was cleaning up for breakfast and one of the staff members was standing right next to me and she had her walkie on her so I heard everything. Uh, one of the kids, he had tried to steal a car or something. Everyone was screaming on the walkies like it was really crazy and he ended up killing one of the staff members. They made all the kids that were at Rowdy come down and then they didn't, they told us not to tell us anything. A day later, they have us all, all every kid that's at Turnabout, they have us all in a circle and they're like, listen, there was an incident. I know some of y'all heard it over the walkies. Jimmy died. And you would think that with such appalling accusations that Dr. Phil would denounce the Turnabout Ranch. Uh, we don't have anything to do uh, with what happens with guests once they leave the stage. I mean. But he just played dumb. However, Danielle proved that Dr. Phil is in fact involved with the people he sends there after the show. My mother signed a consent of release of information to send progress reports directly from Turnabout to the Dr. Phil show. So when you say you don't have any feedback from them, that is not true. Danielle added that she doesn't believe that Dr. Phil is unaware of what really happens behind closed doors at the ranch. Plus, a murder did take place at this ranch. You would think that at the very least, Dr. Phil would stop recommending it as a precautionary measure, but he continues to praise the ranch. We sent this young woman to uh, Turnabout Ranch, which is a very serious, responsible place for kids to go to get their values straight and get their heads on right. Try to be an emotional compass and point parents in a direction. What the direction is that? Sexual abuse, murders, and torture? That's that's the direction? Oh, that's phenomenal. Start your to-do list, parents. Have your kid watch somebody get murdered, have them get sexually assaulted, and have them get tortured. They'll come out great. Even if Dr. Phil is innocent, maybe he should consider investigating these facilities before using his massive platform to endorse them, which is why people Damn, that Sonic ice cream looks so fucking good. Like, look at that. Like, you see that? I don't know if you can see. Like, you can see a little glimpse of that fucking ice cream. Like, that, uh, you know how good that sounds right now? That sounds so fucking good. Uh, 
Oh, so inspired that he might have some sort of financial interest that benefits him every time a child is sent to the camp. It was after this expose that the narrative surrounding Danielle's Dr. Phil episode and her whole persona started to change. She was 13. Wow, this is 100% bad parenting on the mom's part. I feel like Danielle was wronged her whole life. Also, she was 13 years old and to be judged and hated like this instead of loved and nurtured on national television. That's just setting her up. All this time, I thought this child was crazy. Now I realized it's her mom. Despite Danielle reversing her reputation to the public, Bad Baby was broke. Nobody was interested in her music anymore. She had exhausted all of her antics to get attention and she potentially burned bridges with people who could have helped her music career. Now she was only being seen as any other influencer on the internet. There was only one thing left to do to make a big bag. On April 1st, 2021, six days after her 18th birthday, Baby launched an OnlyFans account that earned over $1 million in revenue. You know what? She made like a million dollars in a, is in a short amount of time. You know, I can't even knock it, man. You know, can't even knock the fucking hustle. That's all. You know how much fucking money that is? That fast, too? Like, I think it was like a million in a month or some crazy shit like that. Can't even knock it, bro. It's really the old weirdo niggas that we should be blaming for subscribing in the first six hours, including over $757,000 from subscriptions, $267,000 from message payments, and $5,000 in tips. Less Fuck. than a month later, Baby claimed that she racked in over $50 million on OnlyFans before showing off her newly purchased $6.1 million home in Florida that she allegedly bought in cash. People were initially suspicious until she posted an income report with the caption, Go cry about it. The screenshot showed a gross income of 52 million, with Baby taking home a net income of over 42 million. The main realization that people had from this was just how many thousands, maybe millions of people who had sexualized this child since she initially showed her face on the internet. What do you think your situation- Yeah, that just, that doesn't even, it really just shows how sick niggas are, bro. Cause that's, that's actually, you know how much people have to pay for this, for her to get that much money? It's just, yeah, was that like me that's to just pop so off disgusting. Like that. Well, I was kept covered for so long, right? Like with the, how it's they were so making me dress. It's bro. It's disgusting. And I was young. <laughs> it's so creepy. It I is, mean, it's, it's creepy, but at the same time, like I'm not one of them people that's like, oh no, pedophilia is fine as long as they're like a little bit older. Like, no, like, no. I still think it's weird but at the same time 18 is 18 and that's what they said it was so that's what they said it was danielle fully realized that it was because of her young age and being sexualized during her youth that allowed her to secure such a large fortune like the news came out about how much money you made every people from so many different walks of life that i knew were like i'm getting an only dance her success inspired millions of women around the world to try and do the same. Unfortunately, almost none of them will even have a fraction of the success that Danielle had. Danielle admits that she doesn't think this career path is 1 billion percent okay, but she got rich off of it, so she was willing to justify it. Now at age 20, Danielle has secured generational wealth. She's done with the antics, done with the attention seeking, and done being made fun of on the internet. Now she is seemingly settling down with a man who is not famous, and they are expecting their first child in 2024. Through all her controversies and antics, most people thought that she would end up broke, alone, and regretting her choices. Instead, she ended up filthy rich and settled down with a family. They laughed at her, but it looks like she's the one who got the last laugh. She won in life. She's, 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 well, she won. She won. She doesn't, have, she doesn't have to do anything else in life. So. She won. She won. You gotta give credit where it's due. She won. She won. She won.